My name is Sunny and today I have a question for you. If you knew you were going to be separated from your books for about four to five months, what books would you take with you? To answer my own question, these are the books that I brought with me. I'm not really on like a desert island or anything, but I'm in Oklahoma City and I've moved again. So you know how around like last year I moved and um, I have since moved again and life has been kind of crazy so but it's an exciting reason why I moved. Uh, we knew when I moved in with my roommates up in Minnesota that it might be temporary if I got a job offer and I did get the job offer so now I'm here in Oklahoma City doing some job training but that job training is like five almost five months long or something and I knew I knew I'd be separated from all of my books and I could really only take what would fit in my car. So I couldn't take all of the books that I really wanted to take with me, which is basically all of them. I had to limit myself to one box. One box! These are those books. Um, <laughs> in the box, it seemed like I had a lot because they were in my trunk this whole time. I've been here for a couple months already. They've been in the box, just sitting there waiting for me to touch them. But, but sitting them out here, it, it, doesn't really, it doesn't really look like I have all that many. I was almost in this situation in Minnesota as well, because when I moved up there, my plan was to set up like a whole big desk area with lots of like new bookshelves that I could add to my bookshelf collection. I wouldn't have been able to move any furniture had I bought any, so it's a good thing I didn't. Um, but I had, you know, a smaller amount of books than what I had at my dad's house. Uh, those two huge bookshelves from Ikea, oh, I, I miss them. So because I already had a limited amount of books with, in Minnesota, um, I knew kind of already what I wanted to bring here to Oklahoma. And it falls into several categories. The first category is books that I'm reading. And the big asterisk by that is the fact that I have several books right now that I haven't touched in months, but I'm still technically reading them. For instance, this book. I got that far into it before I stopped reading it. And that's sad, because I'll be talking more about this book soon. Or even this book, which I haven't really read very much of, but technically I'm still reading it. There you go, see? I read like a quarter inch. I really like it though. The second category of books that I had to bring with me are things that I wanted to reread. I don't know when I want to get to them, but I know, I know they are things that I want to reread. And in fact, one of those is a series that I read in high school and I really liked it. And a couple years ago, I was like, hey, I want to read that again. So I started buying the books on Amazon. So I have the first several. I've read a few of them since then and I'm, currently in the process of getting through that series, so I brought a few with me. And that's these guys. This is the Sano Ichiro series by uh, Laura Jo Rowland. It's a detective series set in feudal Japan. I love these books. And apparently, the amount that I read originally, there's like double. She's got like 18 books in the series, and I think I read like eight, six, seven, something like that. I need to finish the series. From time to time, I do enjoy a non-fiction book, usually like business or finances or self-help or something, like this one. This is a fantastic business book. I've been wanting to reread this for ages. It's a fantastic little business book all about um, location-independent kind of businesses. I'd love to run one. Um, I've been researching online entrepreneurship for ages and it's a goal of mine but I want to reread it see how it holds up after a few years um, Tim Ferriss has been doing some fantastically interesting things lately so it's time to reread this so I brought it along the third category of books that I wanted to bring with me is series that I'm working on things that I haven't read yet that I can't believe I've gone this long without reading for instance I need to finish Darker Shades of Magic Trilogy by V.E. Schwab. She's my favorite author. I still haven't read the finale. 
partly because I might be a little afraid to end of the series. I am enjoying it so much, but I can't believe it's gone this long. I was dying to get my hands on this book. Like, I even posted on Instagram that I was super happy to get the book and I still haven't read it. Same thing with Wayfarer. I read the first one and loved it. And then I, I, still, I still haven't read the second one. And it's been out for almost a year. <sighs> Must be something about finishing series that I'm leery of. I, I guess I don't want them to end. I guess I just want to live forever without ever knowing that 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 m the perfect universe that I've created in my mind has been destroyed by the ending the author has chosen because I still haven't picked up the sequel to this. Uh, Our Dark Duet came out months ago and I was really excited to get my hands on it and I have not. And one of my other favorite authors, like a year and a half ago, released a book. It's that one down there at the bottom. I don't really feel like moving all the books right now, but yeah. The fourth category of books that I had to bring with me <laughs> are reference books. Mostly writing reference books because, you know, I write sometimes. Um, <laughs> I decided to bring with me Writing Down the Bones by Natalie Goldberg and On Writing by Stephen King. I've read both of these and I remember really enjoying them. This one was assigned by a creative writing class and I think this one was too, but so many writers, authors, whatever, recommend this as like inspiration and, and just general good. Both of them. Awesome. I really need to pick up Zen and the Art of Writing though. That's, I think, would be a great addition to these. And of course, there's a few other books over there I didn't really talk about. There's some stuff that I need to work on my finances, so I got some of that over there that I decided to bring. Let's be responsible, Sunny. So those are the books that I brought with me. I've bought a few since then. So I've kind of gotten into classics. I've got Annotated Dracula, Ivanhoe, Room Where the Views, Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and other stories. And Clarissa. <laughs> anyway, I was watching a history show and it was talking a lot about um, the origins of like the romance novel kind of thing. Like, not like Harlequin romance, although that was brought up, but like the classic literature of like Jane Austen and that kind of romance kind of thing. So I decided to pick up a few classics and read them, maybe, I don't know, and I've got other things planned, so I have bought some of those classics because I wanted to read certain things. Anyway, I've got plans coming up <laughs> and I wanted to read some books, so I bought, I bought some books. Plus. I'm being paid much more than I was up in Minnesota, so I can afford to buy some books. Those are the books that I decided needed to be near me for this approximately five month duration on a deserted island. Sorry, Oklahoma. I wonder what kind of books you would take with you if you knew you were going to be separated from everything for five months, four months, six months, whatever. For any length of time, if you had to be separated from your books, what would you take with you? It's an interesting question. Feel free to respond in the comments below. I am going to be participating in NaNoWriMo this year, and I've got another project coming up this October, so stay tuned for that. I will see you soon. Hopefully I don't fade away into nothingness. But anyway, that's it for me. Bye! House of Leaves by Daniel Lewandowski. Lewin, Lewin, that by, but, <laughs> and that's, oh my god. Hit yourself in the face.